Hello everybody, Tegan here with High Point. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today we are very excited to share with you a full review of a dual narrowband filter set that has completely changed my appreciation for imaging with a one-shot color camera. And this is the Ascar Color Magic Ultra E-Series Dual Band Filter Package. The first one, the E1, is a four nanometer HA03 filter, similar to what you'd expect from a standard dual band filter. The second one, or the E2, is a four nanometer S2 and O3 filter. Now, when you properly combine both of these filters in post-processing, you can achieve that Hubble palette style image that you so often see with monochrome cameras. So now let's dive deeper into these filters and talk about narrowband imaging, filter specifications, and why these filters may be the missing piece that takes your Astro photos to the next level. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned. So what exactly is narrowband imaging? If you're not familiar, we use narrowband filters to image our favorite targets through light pollution. These filters block out all surrounding wavelengths of light besides a very specific band pass, allowing us to see stunning detail in our favorite emission targets like the Orion Nebula, the Pac-Man Nebula, or the Heart and Soul Nebula. Now there are also dual narrowband filters, and these allow two different wavelengths to pass through, typically hydrogen alpha and oxygen three wavelengths. The Ascar Color Magic filter set does come with the HA03 dual band filter, but also the S203 or sulfur and oxygen dual band filter. And this is the filter that has been so transformative in my experience with imaging with a one shot color camera. So very briefly, the problem that a lot of astrophotographers who use a dual band HA03 filter and a one shot color camera run into is that the data they collect through this filter typically is overpowered in the hydrogen alpha emission. Now there are ways to extract that O3 from this filter, separate the green and the blue channels, and combine it back into the image to create a Hubble style-esque palette but this can be quite painstaking, especially if you don't have enough data. This is the main reason why I personally have always shot with a monochrome camera if I want to achieve a very high quality SHO image. And that was until I used the Ascar Color Magic E series filter set. Now we collected a lot of data on the Butterfly Nebula, so we'll get into that data through both of these filters in a moment, but let's take a look at the specs. Now, first and foremost, these are two inch filters and they're compatible with today's most popular filter wheels, focal reducers, field flatteners, and filter drawers. A two inch filter also means they're compatible with full frame cameras with a 44 millimeter imaging diagonal. So now let's talk about the E1 filter. The E1 filter is a very narrow dual band HA03 filter with a 3.7 nanometer and four nanometer band pass respectively. This filter isolates light centered on the 656.6 .6 nanometer wavelength for hydrogen alpha and the 500.7 nanometer wavelength for O3. Now, if you're not familiar with narrow band filters, the narrower the band pass of the filter, the more light pollution blocking capabilities that it has and thus more contrast and details in your image. A filter with with a four nanometer band pass is reaching the limit of what is available on the market today. Now let's move on to the E2 filter. The E2 filter is a two inch dual band S203 filter with a four nanometer and a 3.7 nanometer band pass respectively and is equally effective at cutting through light pollution as the E1 filter. It targets wavelengths centered at 672 nanometers for S2 and 500.7 nanometers for O3. One thing to note is that for both filters, the O3 is centered over the exact same wavelength. This is going to help us collect a lot of O3 data through both filters. All right, so, so far we've talked about what narrowband imaging is and some of the problems that astrophotographers might run into when imaging with a dual band filter and a one shot color camera. We've talked about filter specs on the E1 and the E2 filter from the Ascar Color Magic filter set. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes and the exciting part. Let's take a look at the data we collected through both filters on the Butterfly Nebula. To gather our data for this project, we used the Ascar FRA 500 at f3.9, the ASI 2600 MC Air, the ZWO EAF and camera angle adjuster, all sat on top of the ZWO AM5N. Through this setup and both filters, I collected a total of 34 hours of exposure time using 900 second or 15 minute sub exposures. So we're gonna take a look at the data through each of these filters and then we're going to briefly cover how you can transform and add these two filters together to create a Hubble style image. So first let's take a look at the E1 filter data set. 
if we simply take our stacked HAO3 image and apply a generic stretch, you can immediately see how crisp this dataset is. It looks pretty standard in terms of color and what you'd expect to see with an HAO3 dual band filter. The HA regions are very prominent and you can see that they somewhat hide any trace of the O3 hues that are present within this nebula. Surprisingly enough, when I separate the channels, there is a decent amount of green and blue signal and this is where the O3 data lies. Now this is a very bright region of the night sky, so a lot of O3 data like this is to be expected. This isn't going to be the case for every image. Some nebulae require 10 or even 20 hours of exposure to really get a decent amount of O3 signal. Now let's take a look at the E2 filter. Here we have about 15 hours worth of exposure time through the E2 filter. If we give it a basic histogram stretch, it is immediately apparent where the O3 data and the S2 data are located within this image. The S2 data here is also red and is more localized around the main region on the left, but is also scattered a bit through the right hand side of the image. The S2 data is going to help transform this image into one with the iconic oranges and the greens and the blues of the Hubble palette. The O3 data on the other hand is very abundant throughout the entire image, especially here on the right side. Now in both of these final stacks around the bright star Seder, you can see some slight haloing through the O3 filter coating. Now this haloing is very minimal compared to some of the other narrow band or dual band filters that I've used in the past and Seder is a very bright star. So this haloing did not deter me from wanting to capture more data on this particular region. So, so far we've looked through the HAO3 data and the S2O3 data and the results were very impressive. So now we're going to go into PixInsight. We're going to show you a demonstration to illustrate how the S2 filter can be so transformative when combined with the O3 filter. Let's get into it. Now, it may seem like we have a bunch of images here, but I've organized this in a way that should be quite simple to understand, especially if you have some experience in PixInsight. So, start off with the HAO3 data that we have here. We've already showed you this earlier in the video. The first thing that I did was transform this into a starless image. And then from there, I extracted the red, green, and blue channels. You can see that here, the red, green, and blue channels. Now, I just duplicated the red channel and I labeled it HA, because this will be our final HA image when we combine everything later. So we have our HA image here, which again is just the red data. We did the same thing with the S203 data. Here's our image that we talked about earlier with the stars. I made a starless version here and then extracted the red, green, and blue channel. Here we have the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. And it, it has a lot more O3 data that's, that's coming through here. So again, for the red channel, I duplicated it right here and I labeled it S2. So now we have our HA data and we have our S2 data. So now all we need is O3. And so this is when I went into pixel math and ran a pixel math ex expression. And it's quite simple. I took the green channel from the HAO3 plus the green blue channel from the HAO3 plus the green channel from the S2 O3 plus the blue channel from the S203. And you can see that pixel math expression right here. And then I divided it by four, and then I ran that process. And what you get here is a master O3 image that combines and averages out all the green and blue channels from both filters. Now we have our HA, we have our S2, and we have our master O3. So we have all three channels as we would with a monochrome imaging setup. The next thing that I did was run an LRGB combination process. I mapped the S2 data to red, the HA data to green, and our master O3 data to blue, just like we would with a monochrome image set. Now I can go ahead and take chrome and its noise reduction off, maybe boost the contrast and or the, um, the saturation just a bit and run the process. And what we should see is a very similar result to what we would get if we combine these channels from a monochrome imaging system. And alas, that's exactly what we see. You can see the incredible blues and purples over here. You can see the, the oranges and the greens over here in the butterfly nebula. You can even see some of the filaments, the orange filaments from the S2 and the HA channel. This is a beautiful result and definitely something I'm not ex used to seeing when imaging with a one-shot color camera. 
The S2 data, the S203 filter was completely transformative in a way that I did not expect. So from here, you know, you can boost the contrast, increase the saturation. You can also make masks and adjust curves. You can adjust histograms. You can add in your RGB stars. So with that, let's take a look at the final image of the Butterfly Nebula. In all of my years of using a one-shot color camera, I have never been able to achieve results like this with a single HA03 dual band filter alone. And being able to transform my HOO style images into a legitimate SHO image has been revolutionary. And the S203 dual band filter from the Ascar Color Magic Ultra E series filter set has made this a possibility. If you are imaging with a one-shot color camera and you are ready to transform your images into the Hubble palette style SHO images that you see with a monochrome camera, then we highly recommend the Ascar Color Magic filter set. Now, Ascar does offer the C, D, and E series Color Magic filter sets with different band passes to accommodate any narrow band requirements for your imaging setup. All right, so that is it for our full review on the Ascar E series Color Magic filters. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments and we will be more than happy to assist. The link in the description will take you directly to the webpage on the High Point Scientific website. Again, I am Tegan with High Point. Thank you so much for tuning in today and clear skies.